I was born and raised next to a freeway and the only thing that was separating me and the freeway was a giant wall that was a sty in the eye and then I moved in various different places in LA, downtown, Hollywood, but I've always went back to my neighborhood, my hood, which was Boyle Heights, East LA. And actually, you know, I've been congested for two weeks and our church is adjacent to a freeway. I go to Bible study, adjacent to a freeway. I go to music pra practice in another park, it's adjacent in the, uh, to the freeway. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm developing allergies. In Boyle Heights, we are surrounded by freeways. From research and interviews, we learned that East LA is surrounded by a lot of freeways that is resulting in pollution and a lot of health concerns. But it wasn't until talking to the community firsthand that we discovered a recent lead exposure that many people in the community are concerned about. A plant called Exide, it was like an Exide battery recycling plant, and they've been there for many, many years. And that's what caused a lot of lead pollution, so, so we were all exposed to all that. It caused long-term damage, and so I don't know what, what effects it has in the long term, uh, so I'm not sure like, how that's going to affect us. There was lead in my home and also it's, it was all around the neighborhood. They, they discovered it in the grass and all that and so they had to literally tear up my whole yard. We're the first to get exposed because all of the freeways, it's like the heart. So there's the 10, the 101, the 5 to us. You know, it's not like that in Pasadena and they, they fought for that right. And it's, it's a lot of it is unfortunately has to do with the color of our skin. It's per It was purposely po positioned there. We didn't fight hard enough, no, it was, we fought. It's that they chose to specifically listen to the people that were of the color that profited off that. There has been a lot of uh, uh, pollution here. In this area, There's a. this is like the great intersection, interchange, like so many freeways and mm -hmm. just living here, you experienced all the pollution and so, uh, I live right next to the 5 um, and we're connected to the 60 and the, and the 101 so that's like the great area where all the freeways connect and so so many cars and a bunch of pollution so so yeah so I, I, my house is always smells at night and you always hear even noise pollution and all kinds of stuff. Actually I live by a cemetery mm -hmm. and, and also sometimes um, the smell, it's just a horrible, horrible smell. There's a cemetery that's close by and when they're sometimes burning the, the bones, we can smell that. There's these awful toxin smells that's very, it has a very awful like almost like poop odor and trash odor co combination. Well, my grandmother, she suffered from COPD, I think. COPD. I do have a mother-in-law. She has bad asthma and she can't be outside for too long. Especially when she's outside, when there's a lot of smoke in the air, she starts to wheeze a lot. And when I grew up, I had asthma. A lot of the elders, when they're outside around the smoke, that they're, they do have some congestion issues, some asthma. I practice with Universal Community Health Center and it's on Cesar Chavez Street. There's a variety of different types of people that come into the clinic. We do have a lot of Hispanic, um, Spanish speaking um, patients, majority, probably maybe 85, 90% are Spanish speaking. So there's a lot of hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, um, and children, asthma, allergies. So it's like the most common that you'd see. Do you see a lot of children with asthma, even some adults with asthma? It does not. It only has, it has a few parks, but they're small and it's not really like managed well and stuff. So, but you know, it's, that's what it is in the city, you know? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I, I believe we still need to work on that. A lot of these parks need more space, they need more activities. We want to see where the money is being used. Us people, we thrive in that community. 
we still are very proactive. We use that cemetery, it's Evergreen Cemetery. Even though it's like right in the smackdown of our neighborhood, we make it as a track and we, we walk that, that cemetery. We also have Ascot Mountain where we run up those hills and we try to make the best of what we have. We don't make it an excuse. We don't make it like a boohoo story. We use what was given and we make the best out of our situation. One of the things with um, within that area, so there is a lot of limited you know, access to parks and other recreational areas. Within the East LA, there's, there's like a park that's kind of next to like, a, I think it's like next to a cemetery where a lot of people go running around there. Um, so that's one option. Other things are like gym memberships, you know, there's a lot of different ones or um, dancing classes or even, you know, I also encourage people if they don't have time to like go out, there's a lot of YouTube videos now to you know, get active and do other types of activities even at home. We're trying our best to make changes, make little gardens in our in our little spaces. And even though we're like, okay, we see this pollution, we see all of this, we're like, no, we can still try our best to make things thrive. We live on top of a giant hill in City Terrace, and we just started tealing the ground, digging it, digging it, and we made little layers. So right now we have radishes, carrots, rhubarb, we have parsley, cilantro, um, we have a bunch of new sprouts of different seedlings coming in. It's just being a little proactive, making a choice, you know?